And it's time. It's time for us to start this webinar. Once again, welcome everyone who has joined us today and welcome our speakers. So today, uh, Gazium experts will be answering to questions regarding the specifications, performance and features of autonomous cleaning and delivery robots. Uh, my name is Maxim and I'm a BD manager at Gazium and a host of this webinar. This webinar is offered to you by Gaussian, the world leading provider of autonomous service robots. Gaussian, alias Gaussian Robotics, was founded in 2013 out of a passion for autonomous driving. Today, Gaussian has become a leading company of AI powered autonomous cleaning and service robots with more than 4,000 successful deployments in 50 countries and regions. And our speakers today are Saxon Hong. Saxon is an expert in IoT and AI robotics and a solution engineer at Gazium team. Our next speaker is Peter Questro. Peter is an expert in professional and autonomous cleaning solutions and a global business development director at Gaussium. And our third speaker is Dun Wu. Dun is an expert in robotics and automation and a product manager at Gaussium. This webinar will have three parts. During the first part, our speakers will be answering to questions about autonomous delivery robots. During the second part, we will be talking about autonomous delivery. And during the third part, the speakers will answer to questions regarding charging docks and workstations. With that, uh, let's start our webinar with the first part when our speakers will answer to questions about autonomous cleaning. You can address your questions regarding the performance, specifications, and other features to us through a Q&A function in Teams menu. For that, please click the Q&A icon at the menu at the top of your screen. Submit your questions and the Q&A section, and our speakers will provide you with answers accordingly. Meanwhile, we will start with the questions that were, that were submitted by the visitors at the registration form in advance. And the first question is coming from a cleaning company in Romania. And the question is, how long does the deployment process take? And what are the main steps? Saxon, I think that is a good question for you. you. I think you hear this frequently. So I'm passing the microphone to you. OK, thank you, Maxine. And thank you for the question. And I would say it usually depends on the actual area big or small or simple or complex for example it takes like a couple of hours to finish the deployment for a 2000 square meter shopping mall and the main steps are number one you have to work around to check the environment to make sure where to clean and where it cannot be cleaned and number two do the mapping push the robot around and to let it see everything and remember where they are and number three set up some special areas like glass walls, escalator area, slopes, speed bump, etc. And number four, set up a cleaning path and a task. And also cleaning parameters is very important. And then to do a small test. And number five, and also the most important thing, we have to, I mean, after doing a thorough test for the whole area for about like one month, it is also recommended to go on site again to do some minor changes if necessary. And that's it. Thank you, Saxon. Thank you for this answer. And we are moving to the next question, which is coming from a manufacturing plant in Germany. And the question is, what are the target sector or industries for applying autonomous cleaning solutions? I think it's a perfect question for our business developer, Peter Questro. So Peter, I'm passing this question to you. Yeah, thank you, Masking. Uh, Masking. I'm very uh, happy to meet everybody. Uh, everybody welcome to this uh, webinar. Happy to talk to you, to e-meet you again. So let's get to the question. Well, uh, we have several um, uh, target sectors. Uh, one of them is uh, retail, and retail, of course, in a very wide uh, uh, way of thinking. So not only supermarkets, but all, also shopping malls and other kind of stores. So every retail department and healthcare, so institutional cleaning. So it can be hospitals, but also elderly homes or care homes. Hospitality, so this means restaurants and hotels. 
And other areas of, uh, of our interest and our focus are public transportation places like, uh, well, air, air, airplane, airfields or, you know, uh, railway stations and uh, all types of industries, of course, from pharmacy industries to uh, high tech industries. So everywhere where people really are very keen on having a very clean uh, environment. So I think this, uh, this, these are the most important sectors. Thank you, Peter, for this answer. And before we move to our next question, I would like to say it once again. So if you have any questions during this webinar, think about autonomous cleaning. What do you want to know about autonomous cleaning machines? Just click the Q&A button at the top of your menu and leave your questions there. So our question will, our speakers will answer to a question right away. And for now, let's move to the next question that we that was submitted before the webinar, and it comes from a distribution company from Spain. And the question is: Can the robotic cleaner pause in the middle of a multi-pass co combined task if it is running off clean water to go to the workstation to dump dirty water and load clean water and continue the combined task automatically? And Dun, I think that is perfect for your expertise, for your area of expertise. So I'm passing this question to you. Yeah. Yes, thank you, Maxim, and uh, welcome, guys. Uh, about this question, uh, the answer is yes, uh, because uh, it will drive back to the workstation and refill water and the charging, and then it back to the back to continue to work. And also, uh, in sometimes uh, in some clients, they uh, they don't have any workstation or charge docker in the system. Maybe they just use the robot. But we also support these factions, like, uh, uh, for example, during the work, uh, there is run out of the water, and uh, the robot can uh, re uh, can go back to uh, confirm the pond, and uh, then you can fill the water, and uh, then the robot will back to work automatically. Yeah. Very well, Dun. Thank you very much. And the okay. next question we have about emergency stop, and it comes from a warehouse manager from the Middle East. So it says, uh, do autonomous cleaners have an emergency stop and how does it work? So Saxon, I'm passing this question to you. Okay, thank you. Uh, yes, uh, they do have a red emergency button on the top of the robot. So when there is an emergency, people can simply press down the emergency button on the robot to immediately stop it. And we can also release it by twisting the emergency button clockwise. Then the robot can continue its task by manually tapping the continue button on the touch screen. And that's very easy to operate. Thank you, Saxon. Thank you for your answer. So let's keep moving. And let me double check if you have any questions so far from our audience. If there are no questions so far, let's move to our uh, list of the questions that were submitted in advance. And the next one is coming from a manufacturing company in the Netherlands. The question is, how hard is the brush of the robotic scrubber and can the brush scratch the floor parquet? Peter, I think with your level of experience and working in clean industry for such a long time, you probably met many different parquets and brushes, so you know everything about their relationship. So can you please tell us about that? Yes, uh, thank you, Maxine. Of course, yes. Well, any like you like you just uh, already answered uh, uh, part of the question. We have several types of brushes for each robot, and there are several types of uh, floor pads. Floor pads are mostly used when, it, when we talk about a, a wooden parquet uh, floor, and they can be used from soft to abrasive. So uh, yes, if it can scratch, depends on you know how your parquet is sealed. So for example, with a wax or oil, or with a hard parquet uh, lacquer. So this is very hard, like like on a boat, you know, it's very hard. So it will not scratch. But starting with a, you know the red floor pad is the most safe and most secure way to see uh, how how hard your floor is and how uh, and if it can withstand uh, this yes or no. And if you and if you doubt the hardness uh, of the, the top of your parquet, then I would say a, a red a floor pad uh, that would be the safest way to clean. And 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 if you want to try out a little bit more ab abrasive pads or brush, 
and I would say just try it out in a, in a, in a very, uh, I say, a corner somewhere, but not in, in, in full sight, but a little bit in the corner, so you can see what your, what your typical floor can have. Or, of course, ask your uh, manufacturer or the delivery uh, of, of your parquet floor. So we have a lot of uh, uh, opportunities here. Thank you, Peter. Thank you for your answer. And I see we have a question in the question box. Uh, let me double check the, uh, this who is sending it. And meanwhile, I will ask another question. Uh, it comes from uh, also a supermarket from the Middle East. And the question is, can salty water be used in the machine for floor cleaning? Uh, Dune, I think again, is from your area expertise. So can you please answer to ask to this question? Okay. Yeah, uh, about the salty water, yes. Yeah, salty water actually we are not recommended, uh, but we can use a chemical cleaning solution which is without form us. And uh, we have uh, also a recommend uh, pH about uh, the uh, 75, 75 and, the, and the 50, uh, but the different uh, robot has different uh, pH around. Uh, for example, uh, the 75 will recommend the pH around uh, 2 to 12 and uh, the ratio to water should be less than 1 to 100 so that we can uh, use the chemical solution on the, on the 50 and uh, for the 75 uh, the pH recommended is from 2 to uh, 30 and also the ratio to water should be less than 1 to 50 so that we can use the uh, chemical solution uh, with the robot and also for the 40 and the 75 we also provide a detergent box which you can fill the uh, box with detergent and mix up with water by software configuration so it means we can control the ratio of the uh, of the chemical solutions uh, but uh, we are not recommend uh, with the uh, uh, salty water inside of the machine because salty water uh, for the short term is no problem, but for the long time use, it may be damaged the uh, robot uh, water system. Yeah. Thank you, Dune. And finally, we start to get questions in our question box. And the first one is coming from a uh, PSE Rose PL. Pavel, I hope I pronounced everything correctly. And the question is, uh, I would like to know about the stickers. Any kind of stickers and of we need use them and when? So I think it refers to the stickers for the robots. And Peter, can you provide us with the answer to this question? Yes, I'm happy to, because uh, in my experience, there are different kind of robots out there, and some of them do indeed need, you know, reflector sticker, so highly reflector reflecting stickers. So the lighter or the laser from the robot can recognize this sticker. Some of them even need them; they are essential to make it work. In our case, we don't need the stickers or don't no need the reflector stickers. Only in a very special case, like for example, we have a hallway of 200 meters that's the same all the time, then we could uh, place one in the middle so the robot knows where it is. It, just like you and me, you know, if you're working in a big building and everything looks the same, sometimes you get confused which door you did pass or you did not pass. There are actually more stickers in the market, also like Q &A, a QR stickers. We don't need them as well. And there are also uh, the stickers they called bulb stickers. Well, we also don't need those, but there are always exceptions. Like uh, if you want to know on which floor the robot is on, if you have a robot like ours that can communicate with elevators, then the bulb sticker we can place on the ceiling so the robot knows on which floor it is. Or a QR sticker we place, for example, on our working station uh, standard. So the robot recognizes the, the working station and can exactly know where it is. But again, we don't really need them. This is one of the big benefits of our uh, different navigation system that we have, that we don't need any stickers of all, only in very special occasions. But a very nice question. Thank you. Thank you, Peter, for answering this question. And it's good we get more questions uh, from the audience live. 
Uh, before we proceed further, once again, I see some people are raising their hands uh, to ask your question. All you need to do is just click a Q&A icon at your top menu and you will navigate to a question box. So just put your questions there. And, all right, let's move to the next question. And it comes from Katsakis Jordanis. Uh, and the question is, how is this pair, I'm sorry, how is this pair parts issue regulated? Is there a place in Europe where you can get them? Uh, Peter, it comes from the Netherlands where you live. So I, I think I'll pass this question <laughs> to you again. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Yes, I, yes, we have actually, and we're just upgrading it as we speak. But we do have a, a spar part, uh, uh, you know, warehouse in the Netherlands for for our, for our, you know, our tech technicians, and also to to in you know in case we are of emergency, because most of our partners also have spare parts on stock, of course, because if they have a, you know some repair to make or some some they get some uh, you know assignment to go to, they don't have to go first to to this warehouse. So all our partners have a specific stock. And we have a big stock warehouse in the Netherlands, close to Amsterdam, from which we can send it out very quickly in a few hours all over the place, and in you know the next day in in, in Europe. So this uh, is taken care of. And we are, as I just said, we are also trying to upgrade the way we are dispatching uh, the the part, so it even goes a little bit quicker and and and, and better organized, to be honest. Thank you, Peter. Thank you for the answer. And our questions are getting more and more interesting. The next one is coming from Arkady Yakimchuk, and he's asking, imagine that the machine ignores the virtual wall and proceeded down the stairs. What could make him do that? And what could be the reasons for this? Uh, Dun, I'm passing this question to you. Yeah, yeah, exactly, Maxim. Yeah, that's a good question because a lot of our and the user and the distributor ask uh, this question. Uh, the security is the important thing for the uh, robot and uh, uh, how, uh, how, how it happens, I can tell you how it happens. Just uh, uh, for example, in a building we have many floors need to clean and uh, the operator chose the, the run floors map and uh, the robot in the beginning in the similar environment, it cannot get uh, the different uh, between the two maps, but uh, some some part it has a virtual wall part, but in another map it doesn't have the virtual wall part, and it in the wrong map, but uh, the true environment is working, and uh, then it will ignore the virtual wall. Yeah, so it will happens. It will happen. It passes the virtual wall, but uh, actually our Robot has a lot of sensor like camera sensor and the lidar sensor and the anti follow sensor, so we can we can detect the empty of the follows and we can stop before uh, the robot fall down to the stairs. This is the first and the second. We also provide an IR sticker like uh, uh, Peter says we have provide some stickers to to in uh, to make sure our robot can get the sticker location and uh, to find uh, where they, they can to uh, go to there and also we can also provide uh, the RFID which the robot when the robot drive close and it can get the RFID and uh, in the in the in the software each of the robot from us in the software if it uh, with the RFID, it will stop. So for this, if the robot across the virtual wall, but it will not fall down to the stairs, uh, yeah. Got it. Well, thank you for this answer, Don. Yeah, it's very interesting to learn about how robots navigate around the site. And we got one more question from Katsakis Jordanis. And the question is for the Scrubber 50, an on-site preparation is required. Water supply and drainage. Who makes the installation? And plumbing company, a plumbing company. That is his question. So, Saxon, I think it's from your area of expertise. I'm passing it to you. Yes. Okay. Um, I have to say this is also like a frequently asked question as well from from our clients. And uh, there might be a several situations. I mean. 
um, if for the for the end user, for the clients, if they have their own team, I mean the their own plumbing team to do the plumbing stuff, then they can do it on their own. But we we can provide some instructions for them, like how to install the the workstation, including the like some input voltage, output voltage, the water pressure, etc., something like this, and also the like the the minimal space to install a workstation. So we can provide this kind of instruction for them so they can do it. Or you can also um, ask for uh, like a plumbing company to do it. And uh, it usually takes about like 2,500 euros on average in Europe to do such kind of installation. Yes, that's my answer. Back, Maxine. Thank you for your answer, uh, Saxon. We got a question from Jordi Silvado. He's asking a very particular question about the situation with his robot. And he's saying about that it in the operation process, there can be like an issue happen. And that this does happen with robots. And there are, can be several kind of reasons, depend how you operate, how you prepare your robot. So Jordi, uh, we will reach out to you right after the webinar and we will assist you to solve this issue. We will call to you or we will get in touch with you directly. But anyway, thank you for bringing our attention to this question. Uh, meanwhile, let's move further. And again, we got a question from uh, Katsakis Jordanis, and he's asking, here in Switzerland, driving the robot with the lift is very important. How far is Gazium here? Is there a cooperation with the lift manufacturers? Dune, passing this one to you. Yeah, uh, thank you, Maxim. Yeah, uh, actually, we have uh, already we already have a successful case in Switzerland uh, in resident blue hotels. Uh, we integrate with uh, Cinderas. Wait. Uh, by the API. Uh, I'm sorry, I cannot hear your answer. Shall, shall I take over the answer just now? To be you, sure can, that you can hear me. Uh, how about we pass this question to Peter? Well, we have several solutions for connecting the, uh, the, the robots with the elevators. And what Dong trying to say, but I'm sorry for the connection, is that we are uh, working on the cloud to cloud system and we have some successful casing there with Redison Blue in, in Switzerland, even in Switzerland. And uh, we are still in also in, in, in testing them, so it's uh, it works. But we are also now doing the fine tuning on there, and we have a global cooperation also with Kony Elevator Company to have a cloud cloud uh, connectivity. And this is almost also in a very uh, I say this practical stadium, but some of the certifications has more to do with the server certifications are have to be you know arranged. It's more that that isn't that way, but technically we are already. Uh, uh, able to do this. And beside that, we have two other devices. One of them we call uh, LoRa. It's a sender and receiver system. So the robot can make a connection with the elevator by a special uh, connectivity device. And we have, we call this uh, a button device. It's a very funny word, but it's not, it's not a robot arm that comes out and pushes a button, but this goes also, uh, you know, uh, uh, by radio, I would say. Oh, this is much more complicated to build in into the uh, elevator, but it is possible. Uh, but it is very simple method once it is installed. So we, we have about three different ways of connecting the robot uh, with the elevator. And of course, the cloud to cloud connectivity over the API. This is uh, you have to see this like a port on your laptop. You know, your laptop has several entries and several uh, uh, go uh, exits. And this is also what the robot has. And this uh, this API has to be able to communicate with the elevator in uh, what is in place. And uh, until now, only Kony and Schindler are uh, ready for this uh, technology. But more and more elevator companies will come with this uh, solution, as this is, uh, of course, the way in the future uh, that uh, more uh, than only you know, cleaning robots will be connecting with the elevators. So I, I hope this, this covers uh, the question. Thank you, Peter, for your answer. For those who just joined our webinar, uh, I would like to mention once again, it's a Q&A webinar. Our speakers are answering to your questions. And during the first part, we are talking about autonomous cleaning. So if you have a question, just click the icon with a Q&A section and leave your question there. 
Meanwhile, I want to go back to those questions that were submitted before the webinar. And we have some interesting questions there as well. And one of them is coming from a warehouse manager from the Middle East. And he's asking what is the highest and the lowest environment temperatures the robots can operate in? And Saxon, I'm passing it to you. OK, sure. So I would say this question is almost like um, the, the clients that we care about this question all the time. And it's the most it's the question that they will care about the most. Um, the lowest temperature usually is um, zero degrees, while the highest is 45 degrees. Yes, it can be 45 degrees uh, because especially uh, the especially like the scrubber, it needs water inside, right? And the water in the in the water tank would freeze under zero degrees. So the water might not be able to be sprinkled on to the disc brushes to scrub the floor. So it doesn't make any sense if you use it under zero degrees. Um, but just make sure that it is also not recommended to use the robot at extreme cold or hot environment for a long time, like maybe one or two degrees you want to use it like for a long time no it's not recommended and also the the environment temperature for charging should be also between zero and uh, 45 degrees um so if you would like to store the robot i mean just store and not use it the temperature could be from minus 20 to 70 degrees centigrade and that's my answer to the question thank you okay. for... i would love to add something on that that answer thank you very much and that I also uh, sometimes hear or uh, see in, in the practice that people are using, you know, the robots in a warehouse that it, where it is five degrees, for example, with furniture, storing vegetables or, or fruits. And then they want to try or, or move the robot from one to another hole where it's 25 or 30 degrees in summertime. And this, of course, can be a problem. Not because it's too, too it's, it's too cold or it's too warm, but because if the robot is working, let's say for one hour in the environment of, of five degree, and then it suddenly is taken out to an environment of uh, 25 to 30 degrees, you can imagine what will happen. The same will happen to my glasses when I uh, do this. <laughs> I cannot see anything anymore, and there's some some fluids, you know, coming uh, on the screen and can be can be you know disturbing the electronics inside the robot. So uh, if uh, if it's a situation like that, I always recommend to not do this uh, directly after each other. So if you use it in an environment of, let's say, five degrees and just put it out there, have it uh, cooled off or, or warming up, actually, <laughs> and then you can use it in a, in a warmer environment, but not directly to avoid this kind of, uh, of, of, of problems. Like you always uh, try to explain is if you cannot use your laptop there, and then, then you also should not use the robot there. That's a simple way to 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 remember. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, exactly. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Saxon. Uh, we have two minutes before the end of our first part while we were talking about autonomous cleaning. So I feel like we have time only to answer one or maybe two questions. Uh, we got a question from Katsakis Jordanis about our uh regional manager uh, again today we are talking about the robots and their performance and specifications for this question again we will uh reach out to you directly after this call so i i will ask the last question about cleaning and that one came from the distribution company in slovenia and the question is how is ai used in robots uh peter maybe you can answer to this question Yes, the AI, you mean the artificial intelligence or sorry? Yes, exactly. AI, I think the person who asked this question means artificial intelligence, yes. Okay, okay, okay. Well, then, then it's okay. Then I can, I'm happy to answer it. So, so an example, the, the spot cleaning ability of the Fantas and the, and the 50P uh, are, of course, uh, based on official, uh, artificial intelligence. So the way we did this is by deep learning. So we showed the robot, I mean, not literally, of course, we did this on our mother computer in back in, in, in Shanghai. We, we, uh, we, we, we teach this and learned it thousands and thousands of pictures. So it can recognize stains on the floor and it can recognize also objects. 
So imagine that you have the, the, the robot on scrubbing and drying uh, spot cleaning for stains, then it will recognize the stain so it can clean it, but will also see that there is an empty cup of coffee or an empty bottle next to it, and it will recognize the form and it will give you a push message on your smartphone or your, your tablet that it's laying there and where it's laying because a robot can of course not take away this this bottle or empty cup not not i mean not the vendors or the 50p are not able to do this so this is a way that we use artificial intelligence but there is more uh, with this special camera we can also uh, uh, see uh, at the floor if there are you know uh, cables on the floor so it recognizes cables electrical cables so it can go around it and it can even now the new vendors that will come out in may can also recognize the type of carpet so is it a is it a textile carpet or is it a hard floor? So that the vendors will you know uh, hire its scrubber deck and hire its squeegee deck when it's uh, encountering a, a piece of a textile carpet. So it will not scrub and dry your carpet week or or a mat that is laying there. It should not be there perhaps or just was there for one day because it was raining outside. Uh, normally robots cannot detect the difference between a, a you know a carpet floor and a hard floor. Our uh, fantas can do this and it will not scrub this mat, but just drive over it doing nothing. And the minute it's coming back on the hard floor, then it will start to scrub and dry again. So we made uh, artificial intelligence on, 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 on a way that it, uh, it contributes on, on the productivity and effectiveness of the of the robot and also the, 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 the safety. And this this works because sometimes I, I'm asked, how does it work? Well, perhaps you have uh, had on school when you were a kid like me, a camera obscura. So it's a pinhole camera. This is how we call it. And uh, you, you remember perhaps that you have a little hole in, in, you know, in a shoebox and on uh, behind you there's light and there's a tree or a house. And on the other side, inside the shoebox, you can see it's projecting. It's projecting what you see behind you, only upside down, by the way. And uh, well, this is exactly uh, only a more advanced way, of course, how this works for us. So this pinhole uh, camera, this pinhole uh, uh, technology uh, makes sure that the, that the robot knows exactly where everything is and can recognize the pictures from his memory. So we use artificial intelligence on a very smart uh, and very effective way. And uh, well, to answer the last question that is perhaps uh, also uh, asked about artificial intelligence, there's a lot of discussion uh, at the moment going around. It's not a jet five, <laughs> so it's not dangerous. You don't have to worry about artificial intelligence inside the cleaning robot. It's only there to make it more uh, prehensive, actually. Okay. Thank you, Peter, for this answer. And we have to move to our next part. We've already exceeded our time limit. So our next part is about let me is about autonomous delivery. And once again, right now we are expecting our audience to provide us with the questions regarding autonomous delivery. So to do to post a question, just go to the QA icon at the top of your menu, click the icon and submit your question. And meanwhile, we will proceed with our questions that were submitted before. By the way, don't worry, if you submitted your question and it was not replied to you, we, we don't have enough time to reply every single question. But after the webinar, we will send you the answers in a text format. Anyway, if you, we're going to receive more questions that we expected, we're going to collect them all and we're going to answer to them afterwards. So with that, let's move to our second part about autonomous delivery. And the first question from the autonomous delivery section comes from a manufacturing plant in Germany. And the question is, what are the target sectors and industries for autonomous delivery solutions? OK, Peter, as a business developer, development director, I'm passing this question to you. Yeah, thank you. Well, of course, uh, for once, uh, once of all, it's the hospitality sector because it's a delivery robot designed for bringing around uh, plates from the kitchen to your table and backwards. Of course, this is the original design of this robot. However, so uh, so yeah, as you can see in your know, restaurants, hotels, that can also be used in places like a hospital with a closed cabin that you can lock or in offices or even in retail where it can be used for promotional tasks 
and even with uh, you know small order picking warehouses that you can also use this robot for. So uh, it's it's meant to be it's designed for in hospitality, but there are more and more tasks and more and more uh, you know uh, circumstances and and, and 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 buildings and sectors where they can use this kind of robot because the lack of people is uh, you know is everywhere almost I would say almost globally except perhaps two regions in the world. And it will save time and making humans more effective and you know not not working or working harder but but smarter and this is exactly what this robot does thank you peter for providing us with this answer the next question is coming from a restaurant from france and the question is can delivery robots work in dynamic environments uh, Saxon, Saxon, I think you will be the per perfect person to answer to this question. I'm passing it to you. Okay, thank you. Uh, I can I can feel this is the question can be asked from from the restaurants, and I can I can totally relate. <laughs> um, but yes, the answer is is with advanced slam algorithm along with its lidar because it has like a 2D lidar underneath and a 12 camera on the top. It is able to work in a dynamic environment, for example, with many people walking around in a restaurant, it's okay. And if you need to move the chairs or tables in a restaurant, I mean, this is what they usually do. Uh, the portion, I mean, the percentage, uh, like less than 30% is changed, will not affect the robot. It's all right. And you can also configure like some highlights the area, uh, the highlights the area, which means like the robot would refer to the highlighted area as a high percentage for reference. So for most of dynamic environments, delivery robot can handle them well. No worries. Thank you. Thank you, Saxon, for answering this question. All right, now I want to check with Dun. Dun, uh, could you get back to us? Uh, let's test your microphone. Can you say something? If yes, we have yes. a question for you. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, perfectly. I can hear you very well. Yeah, thank you. All right, let's proceed further. And the question that I wanted to ask you comes from a distribution company from Israel. What is the load weight limit for Delivery X1? OK, uh, the load weight limited uh, for the X1. And actually, we said uh, X1 Pro uh, for the overseas, uh, for the deliver robot. The maximum payload for each, each tray is 10 is 10 kilogram and the three trees is 30 kilogram at max yeah thank you very much dun by the way we can hear you very well but for some reason okay. we cannot see you that would be amazing <laughs> if you could turn on your camera so we can also see you as well but anyway thank uh, you very you, much for your answer you, you, you cannot see me uh no maybe try to turn on turn off your camera yeah okay let me try <laughs> yeah meanwhile we're gonna go to our next question it also comes from a distribution company from israel and they ask how fast a delivery robot can move saxon with your expertise in robotics i'm passing it to you okay um how fast a, a delivery robot can move uh, well yes. uh, the maximum speed is 1.2 meters per second and but the, the speed can be adjustable and for some situations, like when you need the robot to deliver some drinks or some soups, you can also choose uh, the soup mode. We have a soup mode uh, designed for uh, when delivering the drinks soups. So uh, if you choose the soup mode by, by default, it can set up a lower speed for delivery just to make sure uh, it can deliver the soups in a more, I mean, in a smoother way. Yeah, so this is, this is my answer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Saxon. Thank you for this answer. Uh, let's move further. Meanwhile, uh, everyone, if you have some further questions about autonomous delivery robots, uh, about Gazium autonomous delivery robots or delivery robots in general, uh, feel free to post your question in the question box. And meanwhile, we will move further. So the next one is coming from a warehouse from Germany. What does the delivery robot maintenance procedure look like? And Doom, I think you'll be the perfect person to answer to this question. Yes, now you can, you can see me or just uh, can hear me? 
Uh, <laughs> okay, no, okay, no whatever. Yeah, I can answer this question. Yeah. Uh, the de uh, the delivery the delivery robot doesn't need uh, as much as maintenance as our cleaning robot. We only need to check if the camera or sensors are free of dirty spots, and also if the if the tails are uh, are cleaned or not. So it's not like our cleaning robot. Uh, must uh, clean it uh, every day. We just make sure all the sensors are, are clean. Yeah, that's my answer. Thank yeah. you. Thanks a lot, Dun. And let's move further. And by the way, we got uh, another question about autonomous delivery from our chat. Thank you again to Pavel. And the question is, can we change traces to box? Uh, I'm sorry, can we change trays to boxes? Can we retrofit robot for customer needs without loss of warranty? Wow, that is a very good question. Uh, Peter, can you answer to this question? Yes, that's a, a very nice question, by the way, just for, because it's a very actual situation right now as we speak. We are, we are making uh, uh, the robot ready. Uh, so we also will have a box very soon with three compartments that can be locked. So uh, the boxes can go around in the building because you know nobody likes, for example, in uh, let's say in the hospital, if you put medicine on it, you don't want that anybody can you know touch this medicine or or take it off the tray or a child could take it off the tray or something like that. So we are working at it right now, so to make it possible to do this. Of course, uh, if you change uh, on nothing, you you cannot change any anything on the navigation. Or you cannot change anything that sticks out of the robot. So it should be inside the same measurements as the current trace to stay in, in warranties. And of course, you should not take out the robot uh, and, and put it back on uh, yourself uh, all the way, because then, of course, you can you can perhaps you know install or you know or, or you know put it together on the wrong way. So please let us uh, uh, develop this uh, this kind of box. So we are all uh, uh, you know, secured and we, we know for sure that's done on the right way. So, so yes, there will be an option to have boxes, but please don't make your own uh, device uh, or do it in very close combination with our solution team. So we both know this is, uh, doesn't harm uh, what you have in mind. So uh, of course, then we can look at it and see what we can do. Thank you, Peter. And thank you very much for this answer. We have a few more minutes till the end of our second part. And I think we can answer to one more question. Uh, and once again, uh, submit your questions. If your question wasn't answered during the webinar, during the lack of time, we will answer to a question and follow up with you later. Don't worry about that. And our last question about uh, delivery comes from industrial machinery manufacturing from Spain. And this question is about how does a robot know its position? Uh, Peter, I think you can also answer. It's quite related to our previous question. Can you reply to this yeah. one as well? Yes, it is and it is not. It's actually a very good question. And sometimes we forget to explain people because for us it's already so normal and so common. But it's good that this question is asked. So this is based on the word we call SLAM but you can forget about it. So uh, in plain English, that means that every robot first needs to learn how to uh, how the place looks like that it has to clean or has to serve in, like, like humans on their first day of work. This process we call mapping. So once the map is made by going around with the robot once and stored it in its memory, then the robot can start its cleaning task. So we wanted to do, uh, and, and while doing so, it constantly is matching the stored map in its memory with the reality. This is how it works. So it sees with the sensors, uh, vision cameras, lighter or laser, uh, both is the same. And this this laser is not a laser like we have the pen at school. No, it's it's a laser laser you cannot see. So it will it will uh, look at the surrounding for 40 times in a second cannot see this with the naked eye. It's going too fast. But this laser is the most important eye of the robot. And this is how we also uh, know exactly where the robot is. So uh, the robot is, uh, is checking the map constantly. 
simultaneously. So that's the S of the SLAM. And matching the relocation with the map. So the, for the Phantas, for example, our new robot does this based on a unique GMind X algorithms as well. So not only you need the, the LiDAR, you need the sensors, but you also need the best uh, algorithms, the best software to make the fusion, as we call it, the fusion of all those sensors and all those uh, software together to interpretate what the robot is seeing. And, and, and that we are really the masters uh, without you know, any bragging. But for this is really what we do very, very well. And we are a little bit uh, ahead of the market in this, in this kind of technology. So we won't have any location loss with this Phantas, and it makes it extreme easy to make you know a very precise map, and also very easy you know careless job to install it or not not careless hassle free is a better word, a hassle free job to install it. Thank you, Peter. Uh, by the way, Dun, talking about your camera, I think you can try it once again to turn it off and turn it on. But anyway, as far as I understand, we can hear you very well, so don't worry anyway. All right, our time for our second part it came to an end. We are moving to our next part, during which we're going to talk about charging docks and workstations. By the way, uh, we received quite many questions about the first two parts, because people are obviously interested in autonomous cleaning and delivery. We also received a couple of questions about the charging docks and workstations. But anyway, uh, if you have some more questions right now, please put them in the question box and we will answer to them. And let's start with the first question from this section. It comes from an IT company from Estonia. <clears throat> and the question is, how does a robot vacuum know where to dock? Uh, Saxon, how about I pass this question to you? Okay, sure, no problem. Um, actually, we need to, like pre previously, we need to set up a charging point for the robot. So just to let it know where exactly the charging dock is, and then the robot will remember the location. So when it comes to an automatic charging task, robot would go that area, maybe just near the area. Maybe it's not exactly the, the point, but that area. And then it can scan a QR code on the charging dock to know precisely where it is. And the robot would remember its position and the robot would turn around and move backwards to dock. And that's exactly how it works. Thank you. Thank you, Saxon. Uh, we got a question from BDM Cleaning Cobots. And the question is, cleaning robots. OK, we are kind of jumping back to our original uh, chapter <laughs> number one. And OK, let's do a quick exception. So cleaning robots, how we can use detergents in cleaning robots? In which cleaning robots we can use detergents? Which kind of detergent we can use? And detergents dosage, each machine do, does dosage by machinery automatically, or we must mix it manually. Dune, it was a while since you answered the question. I'm passing this one to you. OK, OK, yeah. Thank you, Maxim. Uh, so you can hear me, but you can't see me. Yes? <laughs> we can okay. see you, but it's OK. Keep going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Never mind. <laughs> OK, about this solution, yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, about this question, uh, actually, we spawned to with a chemical solution uh, without uh, uh, formers. And the pH around the uh, the pH the pH is limited. For example, for the uh, for our 50 pro, the scraper 50 pro, the pH around the two to twelve, and the ratio to water should be less than one to uh, one hundred. Yeah, and uh, for the for the 75, the pH around the two uh, to thirty. And the ratio to water should be less to uh, less than one to fifty. And uh, your question is, uh, yeah, each machine do the dosage by machine automatically, or we must mix it manually. Yeah, for the seventy five, we support uh, the uh, detergent box uh, additionally, and uh, you can fill the uh, the criminal solution to the box and uh, it will release the solution automatically and for the 50 uh, we have two version uh, of the 50 now 
uh, because next month, yeah, three days later, we will release our new version about the 50 and which can support uh, also with a detergent box inside of the machine and you can fill the, uh, the chemical solution into the box and it uh, can be mixed up with water by the software configuration. So no need mixed manually and we can control the ratio between the uh, between the solution and the waters. And uh, also the new 50 and the new 75 spawn that. But for the old 50, the old 50, we can just need to uh, fill the solution to the water tank directly. We cannot uh, control it by software. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think That's I have good. answered your question, yeah? Yeah, 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 thank you, John. Let, let, let me a little, complete this a little with this answer because what we also can do, and this is actually directly a nice bridge back to charging docks and workstations, what we also can do, of course, is uh, install a dosing unit, so an automated dosing unit, you know, on the working station. So with a water inlet going into the water station, we can directly dilute uh, chemicals uh, directly into the fresh water tank of the 50 or the 75. This is always possible. And of course, you can use the, 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 a lot of different chemicals from a lot of diff different, you know, manufacturers. Uh, my advice is, if it's not needed to to use a high pH or a low pH, just use a neutral pH uh, floor chemical, low foam, and uh, and then that that's the most safe one to use. So you don't, uh, you know, if you're not know a, a lot about floor or floor care or about what type of floors there are, and this is the most safe one. So a neutral floor cleaner with low foam and by a dosing unit that can go uh, one to 100, uh, 500 even in, in, in little bags, and you can just attach to the to the working station. That's also another way of dosing uh, chemicals into, into our robotics. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Peter. Thank you, Dun, for answering uh, those questions. And uh, our time is running out. We are going to end up this webinar very soon. So if you have some questions left, even off top the main topic, you can still submit them. Uh, and we have a couple of minutes left. But anyway, as I mentioned before, uh, all the attendees, all the people who sign up to this webinar will receive a follow-up. And in this follow-up, you can read the answers to our questions in a text format. All right, I think we can move to our final question regarding the charging docks and workstations, and it's coming from IT company Estonia. And the question is, what's the difference between the charging dock and the workstation? Oh, Peter, I think that is a great question for you. Yes, of course, it's a, the, one of the uh, a simple questions to end. <laughs> so, yes, a charging dock, of course, only as the word says it by itself, is it charging the battery. So that's it. It only charges the battery. But a working station or a full working station, or some people uh, call it a service station as well, this includes autonomous water supply, so fresh water supply, and draining of the wastewater that's inside the robot. So fully autonomous getting fresh water in and getting a wastewater out and charging the batteries all at the same time. So this is why we call it a workstation because three things are happening there. And as I just explained, a fourth thing can happen there as well. So you can also connect you know, a dosing unit there with the water supply. So you also can connect the, the chemicals there if you like. So you have a, a, a real station where the robot can go back and forward to and uh, it's a fixed spot uh, where the robot uh, uh, will, will, will start and stop. Of course, you can uh, you can alter the robot. So you can say, look, you have to start from this working station or, 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 or charging dock, but you have to go drive there for let's say 100 meters and then start your task. So you, you don't have to start always to clean from this working station or uh, docking station. It's only there to, you know, to charge the battery and to to exchange the water, etc. I hope this this covers the the question. Right. Uh, thank you very much, Peter, to your answer. And yes, uh, I don't see any other questions so far. So I think we can uh, wrap up this webinar. I want to say thank you, everyone, for joining us today. 
If you still have some questions, feel free to post them in. We will reply to them to you afterwards. Meanwhile, you can scan a QR code and you can submit your inquiry. So later, our local representatives will get in touch with you after you leave your personal information and you can discuss if you have some other questions about our machines. At the same time, we want to put some links in a chat box. So we are going to post there a link to our website and of course to our LinkedIn page. So follow us there. You can learn about our coming events there. And we're going to run a couple of more webinars very soon. We're going to do one on uh, retail industry next. So stay in touch, follow up on us on LinkedIn, uh, visit our website to learn more. And if you are interested to learn more about the robots, just scan a QR code and submit an inquiry. Our local representative will get in touch with you soon. Peter, Saxon, Dund, any final words? Uh, everybody very much uh, that was uh, staying during the webinar. Thank you very much for listening in and, and giving us this great questions. We are very happy to uh, let's hope to, to meet again next time uh, online or live. Yeah. Thanks, Sam. Yes, exactly. I'm so glad to have uh, to answer so many interesting questions from the clients and um, I mean, I'd like to hear more about it uh, because it's a it's a really good pressure for us to to push this industry forward a little bit. And uh, yeah, thank you guys for your time. Dune, even though we cannot see you, we still hope to hear some final words from you. Okay, uh, thank you guys for coming. And uh, this time, I also uh, get to the two questions from your side, and we. Uh, we we'll, we will continue our work for the uh, for you guys and uh, for <coughs> optimize our robot uh, to service more people uh, in the world. Thank you. Thank you everyone for joining us today. Thank you to our speakers for the amazing answers. And let's stay in touch and see you next time. Bye everyone. Okay. Bye bye everyone. Bye. Have a good day. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. See you next bye -bye. time.